All right. Um, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I'm very glad to be here to share uh, some new understandings. Uh, recently, I got through this work with uh, Tim Cohen, Nathaniel Craig, and Dave Sutherland. Um, here, uh, what is uh, the so-called heft? Um, so I was told by uh, the organizer that I should be uh, clear about the definition up front. Uh, of what the EFT I'm talking about by specifying the uh, particle content and the symmetry of the low energy. So here is the, the EFTs I'm talking about in this talk. So I'm talking about SMEFT and HEFT here. So as usual, uh, uh, the standard model is a very successful model. And then we further supplement it by higher dimensional operators like in this uh, brown line. Uh, that's the what we usually call uh, SMAP. So uh, I wouldn't say more about the motivation of uh, uh, extend beyond standard model here, uh, but uh, just to be clear about the definition, uh, in SMAP we write down new operators that beyond the renormalizable level uh, with this uh, doublet capital H here. So it's a SU2 doublet, and uh, it has uh, four uh, real degrees of freedom inside, right? Four scalars. And uh, one of them is supposed to be the physical Higgs boson, and the other three are the gold stones. And we uh, we put them together to form this SU2 doublet, and uh, write down uh, this tower of uh, uh, higher dimensional operators like dimension five, six, seven, and so forth. And uh, uh, this is uh, the usual SMAF. And another uh, EFT. <coughs> I'm talking about is the heft. That's similar with SMAF. We also uh, still uh, only using uh, the standard model particle content. Uh, but instead of writing it as a doublet, capital H, we separ separately uh, write in terms of this physical Higgs little h here and this uh, uh, Goldstone matrix U here, uh, which is a uh, 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 SU2. Uh, a matrix uh, uh, here, um, a special unitary two by two uh, matrix. And uh, uh, in, in this case, we don't have to uh, put them into a doublet form. So they're just uh, uh, sort of independent here. And uh, so by doing this, then you can imagine uh, nominally people say, uh, this is larger uh, than the SMAP set because uh, uh, they're they are independent from each other when you write down the Lagrangian. And uh, uh, a typical form of writing down the Lagrangian is something like here uh, at the bottom. Um, you have this uh, uh, kinetic term of the little h and potential, and uh, this is the uh, kinetic term of the gold stones, and with arbitrary form factor uh, uh, capital F and, and arbitrary potential V. So this is just only a few uh, terms, uh, for example. It's not, it's not even the leading order uh, of halves or anything. I'm just showing uh, uh, some. Um, uh, some terms uh, uh, to give you a sense what what EFT I'm talking about. The symmetry are the same between the two EFTs. Uh, they're the same, precisely the same as standard model. So you have the usual uh, SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 symmetry and uh, <coughs> this, uh, uh, you know, everything in standard model basically. Um, uh, but we know that standard model is spontaneously broken. So the uh, in the SMAP case, you will this capital H will get a VAB later on, and uh, uh, in this uh, uh, half the case, then uh, uh, this uh, little H is the physical one. Uh, but then the ghost stone in written in this way, you're uh, realizing the symmetry in the usual uh, nonlinear uh, realization way. And then uh, that's, uh, that's realizing this is spontaneously uh, uh, broken symmetry uh, that way. So we nominally typically say uh, halved is a linear realization, uh, sorry, smapped is a linear realization, while halved is a nonlinear one. Uh, that's just uh, uh, based on how you write down uh, your theory. Uh, but, uh, uh, I should be clear that the, 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 the deep meaning of the difference between SMAP and HAPT is the topic of this talk. So uh, I, up to this stage, I'm just giving the nominal uh, definition of the two EFTs, but uh, I will keep digging on the, the actual difference between the two and uh, what is precisely this uh, blue shaded region here uh, of HAPT 
is the the subject uh, of this talk. Uh, so, oh shit, okay. Um, so I should uh, say that uh, uh, in this talk, I'm focused on just uh, uh, digging on this blue shaded region and uh, uh, what what's uh, what what's the difference? What what series sits here in this shaded part? And, and what UV physics will generate uh, an EFT sitting here. Uh, so uh, instead, I, I don't uh, I don't attempt to, to give a, a literature literature review on this uh, uh, this two EFTs or standard model. So, but of course, it's obvious that my our work is uh, built upon this uh, all those fantastic uh, uh, previous literatures and uh, those contributions about setting up uh, the this EFTs and as well as the standard model. Um, so let me uh, show you the the outline of this talk. So it's basically just this few parts. So first, I will establish the connection between heft and uh, non-elasticities. So it's basically saying heft is bigger than SMAP, but uh, only in the sense that it captures uh, or allow you to have non-analytic uh, uh, interactions. And then the second part, I will I will explain that this first identification of heft is further messed up by uh, field redefinitions in the EFT. That is, you will see certain non-analyticities non can be removed by field redefinition. So they're not really uh, a signature of heft, but other non-analyticities cannot be removed and they are physical. So we need a uh, robust way and a field redefinition to distinguish the two EFTs. Say if I give you a Lagrangian, how do you know it's actually uh, halved with physical non elasticities or uh, it's secretly asymmetric? Uh, and finally, I will uh, uh, move on to discuss about UV physics then. So what UV physics can lead us to uh, this halved with uh, non analytic interactions? And we will talk about uh, two, uh, we'll identify two scenarios that could lead, the, lead us to halved. And it turns out that one is when you integrate out some heavy physics that has extra electroweak uh, symmetry breaking, or uh, you have integrated out some um, uh, particles that you think are heavy, but actually they only get mass through uh, the, uh, the web of the Higgs. So once you uh, switch off the web of the Higgs in the standard model, then they are, uh, they are actually massless uh, uh, particles. So then you will get non analytics um, okay, so to talk about the um, uh, the relation between SMAPT and HAPT, and in particular to check that HAPT is bigger than SMAPT, and of course the way is to say if I have a particular Lagrangian handed over uh, in terms of SMAPT, can I write it in terms of HAPT uh, as I defined uh, on, the, on the first slide? And to do so, uh, well, we can write uh, interactions into this uh, sigma field where the second column is this uh, capital H doublet. And the first column is the, uh, the dual, uh, the SU2 dual, dual like this. And if you write it this way, uh, it's very easy to notice that this is almost a uh, special unitary matrix and you sigma dagger sigma is proportional to identity matrix and with this norm H mod square. And further, it's determined is H mod square. So uh, we can factorize this uh, 1 over root 2v plus h out as the, uh, the radial part. And the rest uh, is just a special unitary matrix u. And then, uh, so if the interaction is written in terms of capital H, and then you can write it in terms of sigma first, and then plug this in, and then you arrive at an expression uh, 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 written in half the form in this way. So we see for any given snap, you can write it into half so this way. On the other hand, then uh, we want to know if we were handed over a half the Lagrangian that's written in terms of little h and the ghost dome matrix u. Can I write it back into SMAPT? We must see if there's some obstruction uh, in, doing the two, uh, in doing that. And uh, from the left hand side, we see that we can inverse this, uh, this, this relation. And then for any v plus h, we can write it as square root of uh, 2 h mod square. 
And then the U matrix can be uh, obtained through sigma by this and, and with uh, this V plus H further replaced by this square root in the first line. So you see in this way, uh, you can still write any Lagrangian written in terms of little h and u uh, back to uh, this, uh, uh, in this doublet, uh, capital H. Uh, but of course, uh, there's an obvious problem is uh, uh, we have a square root here in general. And it also shows up in this uh, uh, unit, uh, this uh, matrix, Gaussian matrix U here. So that's a sign for uh, non analyticity non So if you, in general you are trying to 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 force any Lagrangian written in half into a uh, doublet form, then you have this uh, square root. And once you have the square root, uh, it, it's not smapped uh, because. Uh, there is an underlying uh, assumption, uh, usually uh, just implicit uh, in our EFT, per, uh, at least for perturbative EFTs, that we say uh, the Lagrangian should be a power um, polynomial in terms of uh, uh, covariant derivative and the, uh, the fields. So uh, non-analytic interactions like this uh, is not allowed. So for example, uh, uh, this is an emphasize in uh, this, this uh, uh, reveal by chart and, and uh, so once we have this, uh, so there's no problem, you can write it into a uh, doublet form, but uh, in general, you have uh, non-analytic interactions. This non-analyticity non is just uh, very simple here. Uh, like you can think of SMAP as a Cartesian coordinate on, for example, a two dimensional or four dimensional plane or something. And then a half is just a polar coordinate. And then the relation, if you, are handed a Lagrangian in terms of R, um, and the re uh, radius, and of course, then you can write it back into X and Y, but then you pay a cost of uh, the square root. Uh, all right. So one thing I want to uh, emphasize here is that non-analyticity is an uh, all order effect. That is, if we start with the square root of uh, H mod score, then Obviously, at the origin uh, of uh, capital H mod score, uh, it's non-analytic. But we can take a different reference point, like V score, and expand it, right? And then if you just keep some truncation here, right, then the expanded uh, 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 expression, of course, becomes analytic. So you have to keep to all power in the field, like all of those plus dot dot dot, to really see that this function is non-analytic at, at, this, at this origin. And this. This picture here shows you what's, what's going on, that this blue dot V score is where you do a uh, perturbation in half the uh, uh, language, that it's around little h being equal to zero. So for half the Lagrangian, you only need the theory to be perturbative uh, around here, this, this, this V score web, right? So, so a non-analyticity non here at the origin of capital H is okay, um, right? But, but in SMAP, you really need this point to be uh, analytic, right? So that sets the uh, convergence radius of this, uh, this expression. Uh, but you have to keep the full tower of the uh, the, this expansion to see that this series is really non-analytic uh, at this point. Um, so that means if you, we are handed a Lagrangian, uh, written in terms of a uh, uh, little h and u uh, in general, then to tell if you really have a non-analyticity at the origin of capital H, then you have to know those form factors k here and f here and the potential v here uh, to all powers uh, in little h. If you truncate uh, that form factor to some uh, finite order, like say I only care up to little h raised to 100 and beyond h 100, I can have anything. Then, of course, there's no way to tell uh, if the, this Lagrangian is non-analytic at the origin or not. Uh, as a side note, um, I should say that uh, when there is no non-analytic interaction, or uh, right, there's no non-analyticity at the origin of the capital H, um, but there could be some non-analyticity somewhere else, then in that case, uh, SMAFT uh, and HAFT uh, they're just analytical continuation of each other. They're expansion of the same analytical function and just with different re reference point. But practically, uh, they have different uh, convergence uh, uh, radius 
And you see, for example, if this is a case, then snapped uh, a convergence radius is smaller than half. Okay. But that's all I have to say uh, about the practical use of, uh, of the, the two theories. Uh, in this talk, I will focus on the theoretical difference between the two uh, EFTs. Um, so let's uh, move on. Uh, so now uh, I hope I have established the connection between uh, heft and non-elasticity. And this aspect was recently also emphasized by uh, this paper uh, uh, last year uh, by Fakovsky and Ritazzi. Uh, so, uh, but the, the problem with this simple picture is, uh, is that there's a field redefinition that could uh, shuffle things and, and um, uh, mess things up. So it's not as naive as you can identify if there's any uh, odd power in your Lagrangian uh, of V plus H. And whenever you have a, a odd power showing up, then it's not analytic. And if it's all even power, uh, that, that's analytic. It, it's not as simple as that. Uh, we can show an example here. Uh, if you have a potential uh, that reads like this. So we see the square term and fourth term, they're even powers, so they don't have square root left over. Uh, so they are analytic in, in that sense. But this cubic term, V plus a, a little h cube, is problematic because once you write back to the hex double form, uh, you get the square root. So at this level, you would say, oh, this is, this is a half. But it's actually not the case because uh, you can do a field redefinition. Uh, first, you notice that I deliberately tuned the three terms so that they are a complete square here. And then next, inside this uh, square bracket, it's a, a quadratic form of this H, right? You can put the linear term and the square term together into a new field H1 and put the constant as a new uh, uh, web V1. And once you do that, the two combines into just a new field V1 plus H1 squared and back to the doublet. It's just an analytical uh, interaction. So from the left-hand side, we would conclude it's a half. But once we do a field redefinition, you see the right-hand side uh, is all even power and there's no square root in, uh, in capital H. Uh, there's no non-elasticity. So uh, you would claim it's a SMAP. So you see field redefinition could uh, uh, shuffle things and remove certain apparent uh, non-elasticities. So that's the, uh, the, the subtlety uh, regarding to simply saying uh, you have some non elasticity in your Lagrangian and that should be half. And there's another argument, uh, also a uh, very nice argument given by the Safakovsky and Ratasi paper uh, where through the argument we also see that field redefinition could be, uh, uh, needs, needs to be addressed properly. So let me first try to reproduce this argument here. Um, so say now you write down your Higgs uh, doublet in this form. Um, so with this uh, uh, linearly written uh, goldstones, pi one, pi two, pi three here, and also the, 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 the physical Higgs part and the web. And now uh, you can just do a simple calculation. The root of two uh, H mod square is given by this, uh, this V plus H square with the goldstones. And then you can do an expansion in number of goldstones and get this, uh, this pure uh, physical Higgs part and this goldstone pi square with the interaction with the Higgs and, and, and so forth. So why I'm doing this? Because um, if I want to have, say, a, a deviation in the uh, Higgs trilinear coupling a little h cube, but uh, only little h cube. If I forget about goldstones for the moment and just ask for physical Higgs, then I don't have correction to, to little h force or higher or anything, just a little h cube without considering goldstone. Then uh, written in this form of the doublet, then you recognize that it has to come purely from this interaction. This is root 2h mod square minus v raised to the cube. But then now you restore the goldstones pi, you see in addition to just this little h cube, you also get a term like this from just from a, a cubic the above line and you have the, this one and then higher goldstone interactions. So what this means is that uh, once you expand in this uh, V plus H, you expand out this V plus H, it gives you a tower of interaction between two goldstones uh, and uh, H raised to the end starting from H square. And uh, so uh, the argument is that 
this division in this physical Higgs uh, trilinear and a tower of uh, pi pi scattering to Hn, they come together. And further, the scale of this, of the, of this interaction is set by this uh, V, the, the, the value of the Higgs. So the problem with this part is that if you calculate the inclusive cross-section of the, uh, the pi pi to anything, uh, then it will blow up and, and the blow up of that cross-section is set by the scale V um, of the Higgs, uh, uh, the vibe of the Higgs. So that tells you that there's a connection between the Higgs trilinear uh, 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 deviation and the uh, unitarity violation of this inclusive cross-section. Uh, so this argument is, 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 is nice as is, but uh, uh, there's a small problem as uh, uh, how am I supposed to see the same argument if I didn't write H in terms of this, right? I, I see that I, if there's a non-elasticity and then you have this, uh, this uh, uh, unitarity violation. But if I had written uh, the Higgs as uh, this way, as I showed in the very beginning, just the pure radial mole uh, uh, radius and the, the Goldstone matrix, right? Instead of just linearly put them in. Right, so so goldstone is purely in this goldstone matrix. Then it's, it doesn't show up in the square root uh, anymore. Then you don't have the second piece here. It's just purely just the H cube in that case, right? Then, but I should still be able to see the connection uh, between the, the 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 two, right? Then in this case, it's a kinetic term of the uh, goldstone becomes non-trivial because written this way on the left hand side, right? The kinetic term is is uh, is relatively trivial. Uh, because it's just straightforward, the usual thing. But here, then the kinetic term is non-trivial, so you should be able to see that the same thing is generated by, uh, by the kinetic term. So clearly, we need some criteria, uh, whether for both distinguishing the, the, the heft from snapped or to make connections between uh, uh, physical and amplitude. Uh, we need uh, some more robust rule or picture um, to do the analysis. And that would be <coughs> some uh, coordinate uh, field redefinition invariant uh, uh, picture. So this picture, there is such one, nicely introduced a few years ago by uh, Alonso uh, Jenkins in Manahar um, in this work and also a another accompanying one. Um, so here they say uh, you can set up a, a field, uh, uh, you can consider a geometry uh, on the field manifold. The, 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 the idea is that uh, you consider the four degree of freedom of the, the scalar H here, phi one, phi two, phi three, phi four, and look at their kinetic term. And then you can construct a metric uh, based on their kinetic term. So here, the kinetic term is not the usual kinetic term because the metric G A V here is to all powers of the field. But you only care about the two derivative terms of the Lagrangian, and then you can uh, construct a, a, a metric. And then on top, on, with this metric, you can start uh, discussing about geometric invariance on this uh, uh, scalar manifold. And those quantities are obviously invariant and their field redefinitions. So because it's just a coordinate change on your manifold and then geometric invariance is uh, robust. So this is a very uh, a good idea. And with this picture, and <coughs> uh, uh, Alonso Jenkins and Manahar uh, uh, pointed out that the difference between heft and smapped uh, is that you can always try to write heft into SMAP doublet form, like I said before. Uh, but uh, to tell if uh, the resulting uh, 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 smapped lack uh, Lagrangian is really smapped, you look for non elasticities but if there is an O4 fixed point uh, on the scalar manifold, then uh, there is a way to do a suitable field redefinition to remove that non-elasticity. Uh, otherwise, that non-elasticity is physical and is a heft. So here, the, the O4 fixed point is that they're assuming for simplicity of uh, the analysis that there, the standard model symmetry is not just SU2 cross U1, but uh, uh, the custodial symmetry. So it's just uh, slightly uh, enlarging the symmetry to SU2L cross SU2R. And then uh, with that framework, uh, O4 is a symmetry of your EFT, um, this SU2 cross SU2. And uh, then uh, 
the whole manifold is rotating under this O4 symmetry, but if there's a point on the manifold under this rotation that is uh, uh, fixed, uh, then that's, that's the O4 fixed point. Okay. Uh, we will adopt this also the simplifying assumption here. So from now on, my EFTs are assumed to have this enhanced the O4 symmetry, not just the standard model symmetry. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so let's see a little bit of detail of their analysis here. It's just a write down 5.1 through 5.4 with this uh, uh, V plus H, the radial part, and uh, the, the four vector, uh, a, which is a unit vector in dot in one, and with this. So then with the O4 symmetry, you can argue that up to two derivative terms, the most general uh, uh, EFT Lagrangian you can write down is of this form. So you have a kinetic term of little h and a kinetic term of the, uh, the ghost stones uh, n. And then uh, you have a potential, but then all the others are higher. Um, with this uh, setup, we can, uh, this is just a, a choice of the coordinates, and then we can calculate the metric and do the, uh, the usual tedious work and, and find some geometric environments. For example, uh, the scalar curvature R uh, is, is this, uh, the, the most uh, uh, straightforward one, and you can think of it using this KF, and you can get the, this expression. Uh, just as a, a demonstrating example, consider this very special case of standard model. That's where this k is one and f is v plus h. Then you can plug them in and you see that uh, uh, this term is zero and this term is also zero. So the whole r is zero throughout the manifold of the, uh, the four dimensional uh, 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 the scalars. It's four scalars. Uh, so then, uh, it's a totally a flat uh, uh, manifold uh, in terms of the standard model. But as soon as you have corrections be beyond standard model, uh, the curvature is uh, non-trivial. Uh, so with this curvature setup, then you can <coughs> talk about um, uh, uh, amplitudes, uh, the connection between the physical amplitudes and the uh, geometric invariants. And there are also other geometric invariants of such as the uh, Laplacian of R and, and higher uh, Laplacian of R and things like that. And uh, other, similarly for V, uh, the scalar uh, on the manifold, uh, you also have those uh, geometric invariants. And those are all possible things. There are many more, of course. Um, so with all of this, then we can now uh, discuss the, a uh, robust way of distinguishing heft and smeft. So, in this AJM work, uh, again, they said the criteria to tell if it is a half is to check uh, if there is a fixed point H star on the manif scalar manifold. Um, so in terms of this form factor, that's just saying that the metric is zero at, uh, because if there is a fixed point, then uh, the distance uh, uh, around the, uh, that, at that point uh, along the goldstone direction should be zero. So then the form factor becomes zero at that point. So they give this criterion that if there's a fixed point, then the Lagrangian is secretly, is secretly a smeft. If not, then it's a heft. Uh, in our work, we slightly generalize this uh, because we notice that even if H star is part of the scalar manifold, so that you do have F, F H star is zero, but there could still be the possibility that it's a kink point or singularity on the manifold. So technically, it's not part of the manifold still, and or at least at least not part of the analytic manifold. So in this case, uh, we in addition to f being equal to zero, we also need to check other uh, curvature invariants here, uh, like r and nabla square r and so forth, and for uh, the potential as well. So we showed a proof in our work that uh, this whole set is actually a if and only if set to tell if a handed over Lagrangian is smeft uh, or not. Uh, <coughs> so uh, this set, um, although it's uh, um, mathematically proven uh, in our work, but it's not that convenient to use because there are infinitely many uh, conditions to check, right? So one cannot practically check all of them uh, usually. So we uh, further uh, conjecture the leading order uh, criteria. That is, uh, if your 
Lagrangians, not just the arbitrary written uh, by someone, but it's actually generated by integrating out uh, some UV conditions, some UV physics. In that case, we believe the terms are correlated, right? The kinetic term and the potential, uh, they come together from integrating out the same UV physics. So uh, it should be sufficient to check just the, uh, if there's an O4 fixed point and if the curvature at that point is finite or is well-defined. Um, then let me move on to the question now to what UV uh, theory can generate uh, this non-analytic EFT, this, this heft. And I will show you very soon that uh, these two scenarios uh, without H star or with a singular H star respective corresponding to uh, there is actually electrophilic symmetry breaking or you have integrated out something massless. Okay, so to, to see this connection with the UV physics, uh, we need some setup. Uh, uh, so let's uh, get some insight from just the tree-level matching. And if you do tree-level matching, uh, you start from the UV Lagrangian and solve the equation of motion of the heavy field phi and plug, in, uh, plug it back to the UV Lagrangian to get the EFT. And if you do this, uh, <coughs> the, the framework is relatively simple, right? This is just tree-level. And then we can do a derivative expansion of the uh, solution to equational motion. So phi c is written into phi c zero and two here it labels the number of derivatives. So as a simple example, if the solution phi c reads something like this, you have uh, this propagator partial square plus m square in the denominator. And then a derivative expansion simply means that you, ex you expand out this partial square like this, so you get a tower but then uh, the zero piece is here and the two derivative piece is here. So the reason I'm doing derivative expansion is that in our geometric setup, we only care up to two derivative terms uh, in the Lagrangian uh, to identify the metric, yeah, right? And, and uh, to calculate the curvature. Uh, so now let's, let's plug the solution back into the UV Lagrangian and see what we get. So of course we get this, uh, we can also, uh, separate the UV interaction according to uh, derivative countings of zero and two. And for the zero piece, we plug in up to phi two. For the two piece, we plug in up to phi C zero. So that's up to two derivative. And the first term is further expanded into just phi C zero and, phi, and then the correction uh, brought by phi C two. And we notice that the coefficient of this, uh, this red part is nothing but the equation of motion at the zero derivative order. So it does, vanish in this case. So in the end, the picture is very simple. You just plug in phi C zero, the solution to uh, the potential uh, 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 extreme uh, con condition and back to the UV Lagrangian to get the EFT Lagrangian, right? So for up to, so I, I'm just uh, saying at the tree level matching and for up to two derivative terms, all you need to do is to take the potential and take the variation and identify the, the minimum of the potential line and plug it back to the UV Lagrangian that gives you the EFT. So that, that's, a, that's this, uh, this insight we get from tree level matching. So pictorially, uh, it, it's like this. You have a v, UV manifold with some heavy field phi and your Higgs capital H here. And this origin is your uh, O4 fixed point. Uh, uh, let me remind you that we have assumed this O4 symmetry. So then uh, it's a, symmetry of the UV manifold, right? It, it, the manifold is rotating, but this point is invariant under this rotation, okay? So the EFT sum manifold is given by, you first identify the physical vacuum uh, on this UV manifold, that's somewhere here. And then you look for the potential, you, 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 you look for the minimum of the potential and with respect to the uh, variation with, with respect to the heavy field. And then you can identify a curve um, a sub-manifold of this UV manifold. And that's the EFT sub-manifold. So with this picture, it's very straightforward. We see in this case, we care about the intersection between this pink curve and this uh, vertical axis, namely this blue dot here. If it doesn't uh, coincide with the origin, which is an O4 fixed point, then that means there's no O4 fixed point on this uh, uh, pink curve here. So in particular, we see that this interaction phi c zero uh, is not zero even at uh, this uh, uh, origin of the, of the little h, right? So that means uh, 
uh, you have some uh, electroweak symmetry breaking uh, by those uh, capital phi, the heavy field that you have integrated out, right? So that's one scenario um, of this uh, non-analytic uh, uh, EFT that could show, show up. That's where you don't have uh, the O4 fixed point in your submanifold of the EFT. Right? So that's how you could miss the O4 fixed point. That means you have extra electroweak uh, symmetry breaking. Another scenario is like this. You don't miss the O4 fixed point. So you inherit the O4 fixed point from the UV manifold um, onto the EFT submanifold. But in this case, uh, what we care is uh, near a neighborhood, in the neighborhood of this uh, O4 fixed point uh, is the interaction uh, analytic, right? Or specifically is the uh, curvature R of finite and well-defined. To answer this question, then we uh, we can look into this uh, this relation here. So the this submanifold, this pink curve, is determined by this uh, implicit function between phi c, capital phi c, and little phi. Uh, so uh, we know that <coughs> this implicit function uh, satisfies uh, uh, this relation. So then, from the implicit analytical function theorem, uh, we know that we care about this coefficient here. So in general, this capital phi is just the collective, co collectively denoting all the UV fields. Uh, so it doesn't have to be just a single one. So this is a matrix in general. And uh, so if this matrix is invertible, then the analytic, uh, uh, implicit analytic uh, uh, function theorem tells us that uh, uh, you, this implicit function defines an analytic function near the neighborhood of this point. And then uh, there should be no problem in uh, the analyticity of the EFT and the R should be finite. Otherwise, if this, uh, if this is not invertible, then there is a chance for uh, not having an analytic uh, function uh, between this capital phi and the little phi. Then R could blow up uh, or uh, yield defined. So we see uh, the key is whether this, this uh, second derivative is, is a, a invertible matrix or not. So the only case that it could go wrong is that uh, this is not an invertible matrix. matrix. Then uh, this, but this matrix is a mass matrix of the, of the UV field we are integrating on. So that means if this is not invertible, that means you have some uh, uh, zero eigenvalue or you have some uh, uh, massless moles uh, when uh, around this point, that is when h is uh, taken as zero. So we see that uh, that means you have integrated out some massless states uh, when you turn off the Higgs map. Okay, so coming back to this big picture, uh, what I have just uh, demonstrated is that uh, there are two scenarios of uh, half showing up. One is you don't have, you have extra electroweak symmetry breaking from UV. So in the end, as a result, the EFT doesn't have an over fixed point. And practically, that's when you uh, look at the form factor, there's, an, there's no zero uh, of the form factor for any real value of little h. And the other scenario is you do have the over fixed point, uh, h star, that's a zero of the form factor f, but the curvature is yield defined at this point. And that's because you have uh, 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 the, some heavy particle that fully acquire mass from electroweak symmetry breaking of the uh, of the by the Higgs uh, the Higgs map. Uh, now, next, let's see a few uh, simple um, uh, uh, examples. Uh, before we can talk about examples, we need some technical advance to to do matching um, to all others in fields. Like I said at the very beginning, uh, to to get the EFT Lagrangian, typically. Uh, you just chunk it to some dimension, like in SMAP, you chunk it to dimension six uh, or something, right? But that's not enough for our purpose here because when we integrate out this UV field, we need to keep the Lagrangian, the EFT Lagrangian uh, as all powers in the field, uh, although we only care about the uh, up to two derivative interactions. So the, uh, <coughs> the technique is here. So we know the usual coleman weinberg potential calculation uh, is that if you integrate this heavy field of capital phi, you get a uh, log determinant of this, uh, this uh, square, uh, uh, square bracket part. And then you can calculate that and you see the black part is the usual coleman weinberg potential. 
And this is indeed to all power of the field. But the only uh, problem is that we, we need to assume U is a constant uh, background field. So namely, uh, the partial U is zero, the derivative of this thing. It doesn't have a uh, fluctuation around uh, across the space time. So we just need to generalize this slightly beyond and include the second order of the derivative. So the right part is the generalization. And uh, so the details are, are in our paper, like how to achieve this. And uh, I should also mention that this is simple expression here is assuming that U commutes with partial U. If it's not the case, then uh, it's further more, more a, li a little more complicated. Um, uh, but it, it doesn't matter. We have a, a nice handle of this. So that allows us to do this calculation uh, uh, in, in reality and then get the EFT Lagrangian and really try uh, to apply our criteria uh, to check if the curvature is finite. So let's see the, the first uh, example. Is so we have a heavy singlet S that's interacting with the standard model through this way. So you have a C2 symmetry uh, here, and the leading matching order will be one loop at this case. So we see the, the mass of this heavy singlet is given by this capital M square here and the VAB of the Higgs, so a half kappa V square. So according to our, our previous analysis, what we expect is the following. If capital M square is positive, then this thing has an independent mass from the Higgs map, so you should get SMAP. On the other hand, if you set capital M squared to zero, then this singlet only acquires mass through Higgs map, then you should get HEP. Then let's check if this is indeed the case. So we integrate out this S, as I just said in the last slide, uh, you do it to all power in field and get the co usual Coleman Weinberg potential and the two derivative interaction here. So you see, uh, this is all power in this uh, field H because uh, this shows, in the, in the, shows up in the denominator. And uh, uh, now we need to write this into our standard uh, form and identify the form factors, capital K, capital F, and, and so forth, like, like this, right? If you do so, uh, you can read off uh, VF and, and the K score like this. Uh, note that this correction here in this red part it's only about the singular part because it's partial on the H1 squared. So ghost stone is not involved in this kinetic term. Okay, so uh, the ghost stone matrix, uh, the, the ghost stone uh, boson kinetic term VF is not modified from standard model in this case. So it's just uh, uh, as trivial as the standard model one. But this K, capital K in front of the, the singular, that's changed. And you have this additional term compared to standard model. So indeed, uh, as standard model, uh, because the capital F is the same as the standard model, so you do have a zero for this form factor, just as standard model does have one. And that's at H star equals minus V. And then, so, so you do have O for fixed point in this case. Uh, but then you need to, you want to check uh, if uh, the curvature is finite at this uh, O for fixed point. So we calculate the curvature uh, throughout the manifold. And the general uh, expression is given by those. You just plug those in uh, to the curvature expression. And we see that at the origin, that is the, uh, the O4 fixed point, when, when capital H is taken as zero, right? Um, we see uh, the curvature is usually uh, well-defined, um, right? But if capital M is zero, then it's problematic because the second term here uh, will uh, blow up uh, uh, because once you don't have capital M square, then uh, the curvature blows up at the origin when capital H is, is, is zero. So we see indeed, if M is positive or finite, then it's SMAP. But if M is, uh, capital M is zero, then we do get a curvature that blowing up showing us it's a heft. So this is an example of, uh, you do have all four fixed point on your sub manifold uh, of the EFT, but it, it, there is a singularity there. And the next example, uh, let's see uh, when you don't have O4, you, you don't even have an O4 fixed point um, uh, in your uh, EFT uh, sub manifold. So in this case, then we want some extra electroweak symmetry breaking in, caused by the UV. Uh, but, but, but to get a physical uh, example, a realistic example of that, it's a little bit uh, uh, tricky uh, because uh, if, Beyond the standard model, you have a heavy singlet, it wouldn't break uh, electroweak symmetry. 
if you have another doublet, uh, then you have basically two hex doublet model. In that case, you have a freedom to rotate your basis, right? And that's a little uh, complicated that I don't want to uh, discuss in this talk, uh, although it's discussed in detail in our paper. Uh, then the next the simplest one is you have a triplet, and uh, then that you don't mix between the two, so uh, they, they could have independent labs, and so that could serve as extra electrophilic symmetry breaking. I will talk about that in the next slide, but triplet, unfortunately, the usual interaction at tree level uh, breaks the custodial symmetry. So this underlying assumption that we have an offer symmetry as our, our UV theory and the EFT is, is, is broken by that example. So for that purpose, let me talk about the simplest analog of that, of that case. That is not the real uh, all four symmetry of the SMAFT and real heft. I'm switching to a toy model here that uh, I'm talking about just a U1 symmetry, which is a O2 instead of O4. And I have two uh, fields, HA and HB. One is charged as plus two, the other is plus one. So then the Lagrangian in this toy model is just a usual kinetic term and the potential. And potential is given by uh, the usual mass term and the uh, uh, quartic term. And there's a, a cross quartic and there's a mu part, this interaction between the HA and HB. What I'm going to do is to integrate out HA and get an EFT in HB. So, so although this is a toy model, HB will be the analog of our, our Higgs, and HA is the analog of the heavy uh, triplet. Um, yeah. uh, to do so, we solve the equation of motion of HA, and we take a variation and get that the equation of motion is this one, the, the, the right one. So it's a cubic equation in HA, and uh, so we just need to solve it and plug it back. So then, but before we actually solve it, we see if you look at the point where HB is zero, then this equation of motion becomes this. Obviously, then there are two branches of the solution. So one is you take this factor to be zero. So namely at HB equals zero, HA is zero. Or the other branch where the process vanishes, and that's where HA is non-zero. So those two, uh, the, those two different solutions uh, uh, it are two different sub-manifolds, uh, branches on, 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 on the UV manifold. Right, and which one you take determines uh, which EFT uh, you, you would get. Okay, so here uh, for solving this cubic equation, we can introduce a little bit of notation here. So the HB is a field we're going to keep. So we write it as R times e to the i theta, where R is a physical hex, the analog of the uh, physical hex. And theta here is just one field, but that's the analog of the three goldstones in the O4 case, but this is an O2 toy model. Then for HA, we're going to solve the EOM. And so uh, we, we care about HA mod square in this case. So then uh, we call it a half a little f square. So this little f will be just a function of this little r through this equation of motion because you can uh, take a mod square of this thing and you see that uh, uh, that's a, a cubic equation for f square uh, in terms of r, uh, the, the mod, squ uh, mod square of hb. Okay. So then we can always write down the solution of this um in, as this, ha equals this. And now this ha mod square, which is f square, uh, it is uh, it's a function of r. And it has those two different branches, one corresponding to when r is zero, f is zero. The other is corresponding to uh, when r is zero, f is non-zero. And this is crucially important uh, because uh, you plug in this uh, solution, uh, ha in terms of r theta is given by this expression. And now you plug it back to the UV Lagrangian, just by brute force. You will see the kinetic term is given by this expression. So we see the physical Higgs kinetic term and the Goldstone kinetic term. So this right part would be the analog of the, our form factor capital F uh, square as before. So you see that in the first branch, when R is zero, F is zero. That means there is indeed A zero for this form factor. That means the O2 fixed point is on this EFT uh, sub-manifold, if you take that branch. If you take the other branch, that means when r is zero, f is not zero, but this is a sum of squares. So for any real value of r, uh, 
this, this form factor is non-vanishing. That means on this EFT submanifold, you don't have the O2 fixed point. And that demonstrates the case of uh, when you have extra uh, uh, electrophoric symmetry breaking uh, from uh, HA, you integrate out because it's not zero at the origin of HB. Okay, so finally, this heavy triplet at uh, tri level, the story is totally uh, in parallel. Uh, it's just a. Uh, uh, just Ron, just uh, a quick reminder to uh, make sure we've got time for questions. Just wrap it up in uh, the next few minutes or so, please. Yeah, sure. This is, this is the last slide be before Wonderful. the summary. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so the triplet case is, is totally parallel. The equation of motion now raises something like this here in the middle. And again, at the origin of the capital H, uh, then we see there are two different branches of the solution corresponding to two different uh, uh, EFT submanifold. And one of them uh, have uh, capital phi equal to zero at the origin of H, the other is non-zero. So the first case, there's no extra electroweak symmetry breaking. So we anticipate SMAP is possible, although it further depends on the analyticity or, uh, at this point, this fixed point. And then the second scenario, uh, it's a half the case. Okay, let me uh, uh, conclude. So in, in this work I, I, I just shared with, with all of you, uh, uh, we derived a geometric criteria to tell if a given Lagrangian uh, in terms of uh, standard model particle content and standard model uh, symmetry or the enhanced uh, you know, custodial uh, symmetry, then we can tell if it, the Lagrangian is uh, secretly a SMAP or it has to be the non-analytic half. And we also got some understanding of uh, what UV theory could generate this non-analytic uh, EFT half. And we developed a functional method uh, to match to all other in fields and so that we can do practical matching calculation to check uh, when half is generated from UV uh, uh, completion. And, and finally, we discussed a few examples, a few more actually in our work and, and to, to show that uh, uh, the analysis is working uh, in reality. All right, that's all, thank you.